Hey guys, Coach Logan here again. Um, looking to find another Blitz opponent, so let's go. All right, uh, this guy's from Germany, 2365, strong opponent. All right, uh, we'll go e4. All right, so we're getting e5, so this will probably be an Italian. All right, we'll play d3. Which variant will we get? C C3 looks good. A6. All right. Well, um, I think I can go knight B to D2 here. He's not... Okay, now that he's played A6 and D6, I don't want knight A5 to come, so I will play bishop B3. Um, I'm wondering if I can get knight F1 in here. Let's try it. Sometimes if you can get this in before you castle, you save a move. He can go knight G4, but I would have knight E3. Um, all right, we'll go knight to G3. And I'll claim that I saved a move. Because normally when you castle and then you have to play rook e1 and then knight f1, that that rook e1 doesn't really help you that much. All right, we'll go queen e2 here. Just avoiding any queen trades. Keeping everything solid in the center. Uh, all right, let's go h3. All right, because he wanted to provoke that. Maybe when he plays queen d7, he'll try a sack at some point on h3. But um, let's throw a bishop g5 in here. Cause a little bit of annoyance on his center. If he plays h6, I can take his knight and then take on d5. Okay, so he's playing knight um, to a5 there. I'm wondering, um, would it be so crazy to go pawn grabbing here? Bishop f6. Queen takes, bishop takes d5. Am I going to get crushed in the center there? Hmm. Another possibility is to go knight h5. Yeah, I think that's more my style. I think I want to just go for the kingside attack. If you, I mean, I, I don't love giving up my Italian bishop for his knight on a5, but... Um, I still think I'm going to have decent attacking chances here. Uh, mainly because this king safety will be pretty compromised after I take on f6. It's an interesting game. Okay, so how should I take? Um... I'm actually going to throw in a, uh, I'm thinking of playing knight h4 before I take, nah, let's just, okay, let's, let's take this. And now can I do some sort of knight, uh, oh, can I play like knight to d2 or something like that and kick the bishop and threaten queen to g, let's go that, I'm threatening queen to g4, which just wins, and I'm threatening his bishop. Oh, but he can stop. I should have gone knight to d4. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Sloppy on my part. All right. Let's go queen f3. Very sloppy. I should have seen bishop e6. Okay. Well, I still have queen g3 threatened and knight f6. So this looks pretty good still, except my time situation. So I'm going to have to stop uh, talking here and just uh, play the moves. c8, I can take on e5. Take on e5. Take this. Uh, Alright, should I play knight b6 and win the exchange? 
Okay, all right. I'm totally winning here, but I am low on time. Hmm. Remove a capture, drop my rook in. Okay, I'll be out of time in no time. Ah, come on. Uh, all right, well, I did not manage my time well in that game. I think I'll. Uh, I was definitely winning at several points. Let's check the analysis. Very frustrating. Um, I thought, like, I mean, I, I thought I played... This is one where I thought I played a good game strategically, and I just didn't execute the tactics very well, and I used way too much time. Um, so, uh, all right. So, uh, we, uh, so I'll explain some of the points, because I think they're interesting. But, um, all right, so the first one is... Uh, this is a typical Italian position. Here, the main moves are castles or d6. a6 makes some sense, but it's a little bit unusual here. So I went uh, knight b to d2, um, mainly to try to get in this knight f1 and then knight g3 maneuver before castling. Um, because as I mentioned, uh, sometimes, like say I, let's just say like, for comparison, say I castle here, let's say pawn to d6, bishop b3, let's say castles. Um, now, uh, I mean, again, I could do this. Uh, let's say here, like now if I want to get this knight f1, I'll probably have to play rook e1 and then knight f1 into g3, which is going to take more time uh, because I have to play rook e1. So the idea with knight to d2 here was to try to get that in faster. He went d6. Now that he's playing d6, I'm a little bit concerned about knight a5 winning my bishop. So I played bishop b3. Now if he plays knight a5, I can tuck the bishop on c2. So he played bishop a7, just getting out of the way of any d4 hits on his bishop. So I went for this knight f1 idea. Um, he castled. I wasn't really concerned about knight g4 bothering this pawn because I think... Okay, so the engine saying d4 is the best there, which is true. I mean, I probably... But in my mind, I was thinking I'd just play knight e3, and I thought that looked pretty decent too. If we get a series of mass exchanges on um, e3, say something like this. I don't mind these doubled pawns. I, I like the semi-open file. I think my pieces would harmonize pretty well. My bishop on the long diagonal, my rook on the semi-open file, maybe both rooks on the semi-open file. Um, I thought this would be totally fine for me. Um, so uh, he castled knight to g3. Uh, he went d5. And here, um, OK, so the engine really likes bishop g5 just immediately pressuring uh, their center which makes a lot of sense. Um, I played queen e2 just trying to avoid uh, him taking on e4 and then trading queens. I wanted to keep queens on the board for a potential attack, so h3. Um, now I went bishop g5, so I found the right idea eventually. Uh, he went knight a5. And yeah, here I could have gone pawn grabbing, which I think is their favorite choice. So for instance, if I take, now if he takes, um, I could throw in bishop f6. Uh, after something like queen takes f6, I'm up a pawn. Computers really love uh, going for material, and I think it's a little bit more than just material here because his knight is actually in some serious danger. I'm threatening b4. Um, if he has to play a move like, I don't know, b5 just to bring his knight back to b7, that's that can't be too good. So maybe I should have done that, but I wanted to be a little bit more ambitious, so I played um, instead knight h5 going for the attack on his king, which looks pretty good too. I mean, uh, and the engine seeming to confirm that as well. He took, I took, and uh, here, yeah, I took back, and now um, I just mishandled the execution of this. I really should have played. I found the right idea, but the wrong move. I should have gone knight to d4, and the point is I'm threatening queen to g4 with mate. Like, if he plays, I don't know, let's say... I mean, he's got a, I'm threatening his bishop too, so if something like bishop e6, now, um, okay, so I, I thought in my head it was because I could, it could take and then play queen g4, which looks pretty good, but maybe his king is quasi-surviving this. Um, yeah, okay, maybe that's, it still looks pretty bad for him, to be honest, but, um, but they're thinking that even better is now the knight can pop into f5, where I'm really threatening queen g4 with mate, and... Okay, he can take, but this is still an enormous threat. Let's see, king h8, rook to d1. Maybe we get something somewhat similar to the game. So let's see what happened in the game. I played uh, knight to d2. 
Um, he went bishop uh, e6, so I went queen f3, which is threatening both queen to g3 and taking on f6. Um, so now I took here. And rook d1, I brought my rook in, so I was better here. Um, okay, here, maybe I could have just taken on d7 is probably best. Rook takes d7 is just winning, so... Uh, knight takes e5, though, should also be winning. Yeah, I was winning, I just was low on time. Um, yeah, I mean, eh, what can you say? It's blitz, you gotta play faster. I, uh, I get myself into these time traps. Uh, oh, did I miss a mate there? Of course, yeah, rook check. Bishop f8, now I have rook to g5. Yep, okay. Well, um, not my best game, but I still think an instructive one, so I will, uh, I'll post it. Um, so, uh, play better than I did, kids.